I've been watching the Mindy Project for the first time, and there's a lot to love about it and a lot to hate. Um, what I love about it is I love kind of Mindy Kaling's self-congratulatory kind of sense of humor. It's kind of like a confident cringe, kind of like aware of her problem, but like patting herself on the back. And I always find that really great. Like there's something about that that makes you see that if you do that with yourself, you radiate more confidence. And so I love that. Um, and I love a lot of kind of when she'll take a, a trope from like Groundhog Day or You've Got Mail and kind of play it out within her world because it's those kind of episodes that kind of show what she loves and, and, and what, you know, you know, it just shows a kind of natural what inspires her and it's genuine, like she's, she's delighted with doing that with her life and that, that delight makes it fun to watch even though it's kind of a copycat. Um, and so there's a lot of those kinds of things I like about it. And then I like the, the fact that she just owns that she does want to get married and that she does want to have a kid because it's, it's rare to kind of, I mean, it shouldn't be rare. In fact, a lot of female characters have that want in shows, but it was kind of cool that she, she owned it, even though, of course, we later on, she has to have that boss babe shit come in where she's like, actually, I want to work and leave my baby with my husband. But anyway, that just brings us right into the kind of what's what I don't like about the mini project. Um, what I don't like about it is that there's a sense of somebody who is turning to the popular crowd or to the people they perceive are popular and saying, see, I'm cool. And what that feels like to me in watching it is this kind of insecure high school girl turning to and saying, look, look, I, I'm really, I'm, I think the same as you and I'm really cool. And there's something really that comes through that's, it, it comes through as appealing to that and wanting so badly to win those people over more so than expression, authentic expression. And so sometimes that will just come through and it's, it's, so we all have that little girl in us that has that. So it's not as though any of us are above it. But when you're writing a show, it just kind of, it just kind of takes you out because you kind of are realizing that pain of wanting to have people pat you on the back and give you that credit for being that, for saying the right line. Cause, cause like with many things, when you, I think with a, when a young person writes a show and they're still kind of caught in that identity of wanting to show that they're the good person, and that means good among the culture, then they have to kind of follow certain scripts. And that means they have to kind of, if they do want the marriage and the baby, they also have to have a plot line about how they, they miss their job. And, and it's not that people don't have that individual. I think that many people do have that. But it's almost like an apology or a, or a way of saying, don't think that I'm like one of those. And, and there's just kind of a, a little hint of that. Um, because the truth is, is um, it's, it's very strange to, have a, to want to have a baby so much and be working at a fertility clinic working as a gynecologist, helping people have babies, and then to be like, when you had your own kid, to think, well, actually, I'd rather prioritize helping other people have kids than my own kid. Because to be honest, that's the, that just doesn't even make sense. Um, and in fact, it, it, often it's like almost, why isn't that even a, a joke in itself? That you had a baby but you would rather be delivering other people's babies all day and that because you just miss being at work there's something about that like i understand if you have a baby and then you're a tv writer and you crave being continuing to do that art and having that expression that's and that's the true mindy kaling that's what if she does have that come up it's actually because she wants to still be writing it's not um, but I, anyway, I just think that they, there's a lot of um, a lot of not seeing the big picture of, of, of but kind of regurgitating the plot lines that are safe. 
So it's like regurgitating. It almost feels like she regurgitates the 30 Rock Tina Fey thing because that was that was successful, and um, and and that and she kind of winks at that, and then she regurgitates some of the Office, um, and then having that kind of uh, having that kind of wanting people to see her as cool instead of seeing her in all her in all of her dimension in, in a lot of ways, right? So anyway, while I watch it, I'm just really struck by that, by that kind of wanting to get that approval. Um, and you know, I don't think if I would have, maybe I wouldn't have even picked up on it if I watched it when it aired, it started airing in 2013 and it went until 2019 or 18, I think 18. Um, and so anyway, anyway, it's kind of interesting. But um, another problem with the Mindy Project is that the best episodes in the show are ones that are copying well-established tropes because then they have, they just lend themselves to a better flow, structure, humor. Um, whereas other, uh, whereas the episodes where it's just kind of uh, without relying on that, there's, there, it's kind of just chaotic. Um, no other characters except Mindy and her main love interest in the show, Danny Casablancas. I think that's the same. Um, there, all the other characters are very farcical, not interesting, no development over the course of the whole show for six seasons. Um, and even Mindy, the main character, doesn't. I mean, there's kind of a fake change because, like, she'll have, but it, it's it's. There's no real change in there, um, but there's a lot to love about that too. Like there's, it's, that's kind of fun too. But um, there's something about the show that it's like I want to watch it as a comfort food, but that I'm so aware of how it's just not the caliber of other comedies. And then for her to make an episode where she's critiquing how white man gets everything. And then, for to me, that was the most cringeworthy episode because it was almost like saying it was so hard for her to get a show not being a white man. It's like, well, I have to admit, the white men that wrote Seinfeld, they wrote a better show than you. And so it's just to be making that excuse and marinating that victimhood when your show is not up to par is really its own joke. And it's a shame because, I, I mean, I like her, but she's actually one of the most privileged women I've ever seen to be able to get a show and not even have to go bother with titling it. It's called The Mindy Project. She didn't even have to come up with a cute name. She could just call it The Mindy Project the whole time. Um, and maybe, I mean, maybe there's an explanation for that, but that's how I view it. It's like, un, it's like when someone says it's Untitled Mindy Project. Um, she's extremely privileged to just get a show really just from being associated with The Office. And, um, I mean, she's, I like, I actually like her memoirs better than her show. I think her memoirs are really funny. And I bet she, if she did stand-up, it'd be really funny. But I have to say overall with her show and doing the arc for a kind of long-term episodial and season that it's really somebody that's learning while they're writing and having a rare opportunity to be able to do that live on a show. Um, and that she's extremely privileged to get that opportunity because she gets better from doing the mini project. I believe she got really good at she, because she put in so much time and hours that then by the time she gets the next show, which was that um, um, high school show, I'm forgetting the name right now, but that show I think had such a strong voice because somehow she'd had that experience and then I think she was just writing more from the heart because she went back into the coming of age rather than the like, look at me, cool people, I'm cool. So uh, I think she's, it's not that I don't think she has good writing and has potential and has good comedy, but that this is like a draft that's just released live and then her kind of still having the gall to critique as 
as that kind of same old, same old SJW lens of acting as though, oh, it's so hard to get a show when, it's, when, when white men rule the world. It's like, well, you've got to be able to have a really good show before you can make that claim. Like, your show's got to be on par with Seinfeld because it just makes people kind of actually more aware of, well, maybe we shouldn't let just any random woman write a show because her show is like releasing a draft and thinking you can't edit it because it's an Indian woman. And so that's something I encounter a lot when I, I, I read, I, I've read a lot of books that I thought, why weren't these edited? And then you look at the author and it's almost as though they think that because that author was not a white man or a white woman that they better edit this because this they are better not edit it because it's just perfect as it comes out they're like they're, people are afraid to even revise edit make something someone's draft better and there's a privilege in that that we don't talk about the privilege of being above reproach we've got to get out of that um, because the Mindy project would have really benefited from editing and getting the characters really nailed down because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of potential that was just not handled and I thought well I wonder why um, but anyway I'm enjoying watching it to a point but I just really want to get done with it because it's just a, it's a pretty grating um, but it's also kind of fun. It's a weird mix. It's this weird kind of love-hate cringe kind of thing going on.